<clears throat> We'd like to welcome you again. Uh, I'm Phil Ayers. I chair the District Committee on the Superintendency, and I'd like to uh, mention to you the other members of the committee who have worked uh, so diligently over the past month or so to prepare this morning's time. Uh, Anna Schwartz, Kathy Vitek, Emily Berkowitz, Emily Hart, Eric King, Ian Collier, Milena Trice, Rod Fry, Tammy Brantley. I'd also like to mention uh, someone who's something of an honorary member. That's Charlotte Berkowitz, who shared her snack times with us during all of our Zoom meetings. Um, and actually, one meeting, she preached a little sermon to us. It's good to have her. We'd also like to say a special thanks to Sophie, who is here today, and Sophie worked tirelessly, as she always does. Also, Jim Miller, who is here, the host pastor, and the folks of Grace United Methodist for hosting our in-person portion today. At this time, uh, Melena Trice is going to offer a word of scripture. Our scripture today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What gain have the workers for their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time, moreover, has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better than for them to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. I know that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done this so that all should stand in awe before him. That which is, already has been that which is to be already is and god seeks out what has gone by this is the word of god for all of god's people thanks be to god and this morning's prayer is brought to us by emily berkowitz Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you with celebration and thanksgiving for the gift of JW and his ministry as our district superintendent. In his eight years of leadership, so much has happened that has changed and shaped our lives and your church and your world. New babies have been born. Saints have died. The storms of life have raged. We've traveled together we've stayed home apart from one another. Three presidents, two general conferences, and one deferred. We've laughed, we've cried, we've prayed, we've worried, we've wondered. We've theologized and preached and served. Through all this, God, we give you thanks for JW's guidance, for his wisdom through our struggles, for his willingness to listen, for his knowledge of the system and his heart for your children. 
Thank you for blessing us with his support, his straightforward honesty, his clear expectations, and his sense of humor. As we celebrate his ministry today, God, help us to express our gratitude that he may feel loved and appreciated by us as well as beloved by you. And as he begins a new appointment, we send him off with our blessing, knowing that he will be a blessing and that you will continue blessing him. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, representing the youth of our district, uh, a wonderful young woman, Shaquilla Nayakoja. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so, during this time, I wanted to reflect on, I wanted to reflect on the trip and because I do everything last minute, I was kind of confused as to what I should write for the trip. And I said, you know what? I should really just come out and speak about what it was like being with a group of pastors just above my age. I'm being nice. <laughs> um, and being one of the only youth that was there. On August 5th, 5th of 2019, I went on this trip. And though the age gap was large, this being my first trip abroad, I didn't know what to expect. And even despite race, creed, um, and experiences, and ethnicity, I was able to relate with so many people, with the youth that was also there at the church. And, and during the trip, we had two guides, Pastor Beck and, of course, Reverend J.W. Park. And if one wasn't teaching me Korean, the other was cracking a joke. And we shared so many memories, like when, um, when Reverend Ann was dancing on the boat <laughs> when we were going across the Han River, or when I was, I didn't even remember until um, um, Pastor Ron brought it up, when I taught them how to dance during our, one of our hikes. And it was probably one of the most amazing experiences I had. And from, Rev, from Pastor Joey singing at the bus stop to Mr. Ron's coffee addiction. This was probably one of the funnest trips that I ever had and I wouldn't change a thing. And I am grateful to Reverend J.W. Park for the experience I had and for his guidance during the trip. And I would love to go back again with this week. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Van Keela, or Shaquilla. Representing the laity of our district, our district lay leader, Rod Fry. Good morning. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick. And you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. That's from Matthew 25, 35, and 36. Reverend Bart, the laity of the Central Maryland District of the Baltimore Washington Conference would like to thank you for all that you have done to support us over the years. As you know, the laity includes certified lay servants, certified lay speakers, and certified lay ministers. The mission of the United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the laity is a vital contingent of dedicated individuals that help to make this happen. We make disciples as we proclaim the gospel, seek, welcome, and gather persons into the body of Christ, lead persons to commit their lives to God through baptism by water and spirit and profession of faith in Jesus Christ, Nurture persons in Christian living through worship, the sacraments, spiritual disciplines, and other means of grace such as Wesley's Christian conferencing. Send persons into the world to live lovingly and, and justly as servants of Christ by visiting the seat, sick, feeding the hungry, caring for the stranger, freeing the oppressed, being and becoming a compassionate, caring presence, and working to develop social structures that are consistent 
with the gospel. And to continue to the mission of seeking and welcoming and gathering persons into the community of the body of Christ. The ministry of the laity flows from a commitment to Christ's outreaching love. Lay members of the United Methodist Church are by history and calling active advocates of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every lay person is called to carry out the Great Commission. Every lay person is called to be missional. The witness of the laity, they're Christ-like examples every day, living as well as sharing their own faith experiences of the gospel, is a primary evangelistic ministry through which all people will come to know Christ. And hence, the United Methodist Church will fulfill its mission. Entrance into the and acceptance of the ministry of the laity begins at the local church. But the impulse to minister always moves one beyond the congregation toward the whole human community. God's gifts are richly diverse for a variety of services, yet all have dignity and worth. We realize, however, this would not be possible without a caring, supporting, and the guidance of a fantastic district superintendent which means he also needs support of his lovely wife. <laughs> if I didn't mention that, my wife would probably shoot me. <laughs> the laity thanks you for promoting a strong laity. We thank you and truly appreciate your encouragement, support, and your acknowledgement during your tenure as district superintendent. We have gained our active voices in the church and community and, and are encouraged to do even more. You have been an effective role model in the church. You have inspired and empowered the people within our conference. And we all just love your sense of humor. We, the laity, are grateful for the opportunity of serving with you. It has been a true privilege ministering with you. Thank you for the experience that has allowed us as laity to grow in God's word and continue to be obedient to serve his people. On a personal note, I would like to thank you for seeing something in me that I didn't see it myself. You challenged me to get out of my comfort zone in ministry. You entrusted me with leadership, first being a district lay leader and then serving two churches as pastor. With your guidance, encouragement, and confidence in me, you have led me to tremendous growth as a follower of Christ, and for that, I am forever indebted to you. We, the laity, are, are not gonna wish you good luck because that's not biblical. We know that God's got this, and it had, luck had nothing to do with your accomplishments as a district lay leader or a pastor. We do wish you, however, continued blessings and the guidance from our Almighty God, our Lord and Savior, and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We will miss you, but we will always hold close to our hearts your friendship. May God bless you. Thank you, Rod. And now we have some music, uh, some of JW's uh, most beloved hymns. Uh, the music will be presented to us by Pam Plummer Matthews and her accompanist, John. Great is thy 
thy faithfulness oh lord my father A shadow from of thee thou change just not thy compassion it fails not as thou hast been thou forever will be great Thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I, I see, all I Lord, on to me. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Air of Salvation purchase of God. We're born of His Spirit and we're washed in His blood. This is my story. Expressions on each face. 
doubt we'll know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. There are blessings we cannot receive. We know him in his presence and believe. Oh, yeah. We will the ones to profit when we say. Jesus oh. all the way. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Josh. I don't know about tomorrow, Jim, but uh, I think we've been to church now. Uh, thank you both so much. That was beautiful. At this time, since we've been uh, living in the life of Zoom for the past year and a half, we have uh, found a way to allow some folks who are out there somewhere to zoom in with us and offer a few words to JW. We're going to uh, have eight people and we're gonna allow 30 seconds per person. Uh, now, uh, Tammy Brantley is gonna be controlling this. These uh, people are chosen at random from whoever's out there. Uh, we're gonna begin though with Kathy Vitek. Everyone will have 30 seconds and if you hit second 31, That's pretty much what will happen. So, uh, Tammy, if you would uh, take that away. As you come onto the screen to speak, please identify yourself so that we uh, can hear you here as well.
we like to thank all of you who are with us on Zoom. We know that everyone would like to say something, but uh, we don't have that much time today. So uh, we're going to move on to our next speaker. And I'd like to remind you that after uh, our next speaker, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm hearing so many voices in my head right now that uh, you, oh, okay. The youngest member of our committee is fixing the, you're not? Oh, Charlotte is the youngest, I'm sorry. Third, okay, all right. Emily fixed things for me, is what that what amounted to. Um, there, many of you are using the chat function in Zoom. Uh, I encourage you to do that. And uh, after our next speaker, there will be a uh, time for a Mentimeter uh, minute again. Uh, yes, please. I need to interrupt real fast to tell you what we're going to do with these Mentimeters. So um, we're going to have an opportunity for you guys to do another Menti. So the first one was kind of a practice. The other two are for anyone who um, didn't get to speak um, but has something they want to say. And what it's going to do is it's going to form a word cloud that will create another gift for you um, that we can print out. So if you would like to um, leave a message for JW, you can sign it if you like. Um, the word clouds work best with one to three words, though. And then the second one is going to be um, word boxes, which are a little room for a little bit more room, and you're welcome to sign that one. So just be aware that if you didn't get to talk and you want to share something, um, there is time for that, and that's part of what this is for. Thank you, Emily. And so there will be two more Mentimeter moments, one after our next speaker, uh, who is Reverend Daisung Park from Bethany Korean Church. Hi, I'm Daesung Park, currently serving Bethany Korean Church in Ellicott City. At this time, I would like to congratulate and thank Reverend J.W. Park for his eight years of ministry. Bethany Korean Church is a fruit of Reverend J.W.'s ministry. Our church, which started eight years ago, held its first service in May of 2013, and the beginning was achieved by the full support of J.W. Park. Not only did he provide a place for worship, but he was also great help in terms of receiving financial support until we became self-sufficient. Bethany Korean Church felt the need to relocate along with the growth of the church and received the Korean Church from the conference and held its first service here in June 2018. At every moment related to the relocation of the church, I could feel the love and touch of Reverend J.W. Park for our church. Now, we would like to express our gratitude to Reverend J.W. with the love and thanks of the all our congregation of Bethany Korean Church. We pray and bless God's grace in his ministry. Thank you. And thank you, Daesung. Uh, at this time, I'd like to offer a few words on behalf of the committee uh, on the superintendency. Um, well, JW and Hero, I've, I've known you two now for around three decades. Can you believe that it has been that long? I'd like to uh, share with you something that recently I finally began to understand. It, it, I'm a slow learner. It takes me a while. Uh, a few years ago, JW, you were at Howard Chapel where I serve, mm -hmm. and I gave you the discipline of the Methodist Episcopal Church from 1884. I gave it to you at the time because that's when Howard Chapel's mm -hmm. sanctuary was built. Mm -hmm. 
But I'd like to share with all of you now what I think is the real reason that discipline uh, played such an important role, at least in my life. In 1884, the Methodist Episcopal Church at the Baltimore Conference commissioned a man named Henry Appenzeller as a missionary. And Appenzeller set sail for Korea. His job was to introduce Methodist Protestantism in the country of Korea. That was a new culture for him, a new way of doing things. And as you both know, Appenzeller was born to be a missionary, attaining legendary status. Roughly a century later, J.W. and Hero Park left Korea. You didn't sail, did you? You flew. Yeah, you flew. Yeah, things advanced a little bit over at the time. They came to the United States. I think that you were a gift to us from God in the spirit of Appenzeller because you both have shared with our annual conference and beyond a spirit of Christianity and Methodism that is indescribable. There just are not words for what you have both done. JW, I've gotten to know you pretty well over the years because we spent a lot of time sitting around tables and talking. Uh, I can't, I tried to count the number of meetings we'd been in together and I gave up. Um, I tried to count the number of sessions of not exactly meetings but still talking that we had. Uh, I gave up on that too. I think that you were born to be a district superintendent. <laughs> now, I do want to share with you what I told JW repeatedly, and that was I think that some superintendents could stay on for life. JW disagreed with me and said, no, that's not going to happen. But I say that in all seriousness to you. I think that you were born with all the skills necessary to be a district superintendent in the United Methodist Church. I've served with many superintendents and all of them have certain qualities that set them apart. But you are the first that I've ever met who had all the qualities. And you really did. And you have heard that testimony from many people. Your honesty, your sincerity, your tireless dedication, your integrity, and as you've heard, your transparency with us is unparalleled, at least in my life. The people at uh, St. Matthew's are in for a treat. You're going to have a wonderful time, and they're going to have a wonderful time. And I wish you all the blessings in the world in that endeavor. But I still think that you should write a book <laughs> about being a district superintendent. Lord knows that you have had an opportunity here to do what not many superintendents can do. Our district is one of the most diverse districts in our conference, and that means in our denomination. It is extremely diverse. And it takes a special quality to walk that journey with all of the different cultures represented. It is not unlike Appenzeller's journey in Korea. It's remarkable in my mind that he was sent by this conference to your homeland. And you left your homeland to share with us how Christianity and Methodism had grown in Korea. And we still have a lot to learn from you. 
We really do. We have laughed together. We've cried together. Uh, we ate a lot of chicken together in Korea. And you sat at the table with me and watched me chew on octopus. Yes. That part we'll talk about afterwards. <laughs> it has been a joy to serve in the district that you led. And we all thank you immensely. Um, and I am going to try to say it correctly, and that is, Kamsamnida. Now, before we uh, have Emily present you uh, with uh, something on behalf of the district, I want to share a little knowledge with everyone, and that is that JW has always dreamt of having a motorcycle. Uh, and some of us have seen him sitting on a motorcycle. In Korea, I was one of the royal guards with you for a day, but you were promoted to the motorized division, and you looked fantastic on that little white scooter. Not so much the sticky silk, but the hat was awesome. And, on the, the, and I, I know, Hero, that you didn't want him to have one, but I could not allow you to leave Central Maryland District without a Harley. So, I, uh, can we bring it in, Jim? Can, is it, well, no, oh, it's here. JW, I want you to have this, and Hero, you'll be comforted to know it's for three and above ages. Uh, it's got a, it's, it's a classic. And now when you're, when you're riding that, please wear a helmet. Uh, and Hero, if you could take a picture of him wearing a helmet and playing with that, we'd appreciate it. Uh, so now you have your hog, and uh, Very good. I'm, I hope you enjoy it. I don't know why he wanted one. I really don't. <laughs> uh, but again, JW, thank you so much. And now, Emily, for a, a more appropriate gift for this time. Well, these are just different gifts. I don't know about more appropriate. Um, these are um, cards that have come into the conference center for you. Mm -hmm. um, this one you should open now. Okay. Um, and this one, and I'll go grab the other one. This was commissioned by the committee um, as a gift to you, and there's writing on the inside. Oh, oh yes, mm -hmm. yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is, I've been told it's the right size for you and Hero. May I see that? You may, yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's a cake. Oh. Yeah. So cake. you don't have to share it with anyone because it was sized for the two of you. Two of yeah. I'll make sure that we all. You can share if you yes. like, but. Thank you. Um, and this is the final gift from Shakila. Can I open it? <gasps> wow. For everyone who didn't hear online, Shakila found this photo on from the, whoa, the cake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. <laughs> Everything's fine. Yeah. Um, but Shakila drew this herself um, from photos from the trip. Wow. Thank you. It has everything. My hairstyle and everything. Thank you. It's authentically me. <laughs> JW, if you'd like to sure. share a few words. You mind holding it, please? Wow. What can I say? I'm just so humbled 
and all the sharing that I uh, heard from you. And just a fact that there are so many people here as well as in the Zoom, it just touched my heart, seriously. And uh, there are many able people who could be at the DS. And I think it's a God's grace that uh, I have a privilege and honor to be a district superintendent in this wonderful district. Well, we jokingly said, half jokingly said, Central and Maryland District is the best district in the whole United Methodist Church. And I believe it's true, not because of me, but all because of you. you all of you are wonderful. And uh, just eight years has passed so fast. I feel like I just started and eight years passed. And it's time for me to say goodbye. So um, I don't know what to say, truly. I mean, pastors are supposed to be good in talking, but obviously I'm not. <laughs> but all the things that you share, the mentee and also uh, the chat, everything really touches my heart. And especially my thanks to uh, Reverend Phil Ayers and Comedian Superintendency, all of you who are here. And also, uh, even though you're not a part of the committee that you are here, and um, especially for Reverend Jim Miller, for Grace Church, and Larry, and for their uh, providing space, and also helping us in audio and everything. And Goshen United Methodist Church. Do you know what happened in the eight years ago when I came on cabinet in my installation service? Goshen church choir came and sang at my service. And then today, uh, Mr. Pamela uh, Plummer Matthews and also Josh, I think Josh is uh, left already, but both of them are part of Goshen Church. So it's like uh, I started my ministry as a DS uh, with Goshen's blessing, singing, and ending my uh, ministry with, uh, again, Goshen's wonderful ministry of uh, gift of music. So thank you, Pam and a Josh, even though uh, I cannot say in person, but I'm so grateful. And most of all, I see, I feel the presence and the guidance of God and um, all this ministry that without God's guidance, this would not happen. And without all your love and care, this would not happen. And I guess as many of the pastors would feel this way, but I always feel that I as a pastor or I as a DS supposed to give a caring and nurturing and help, but it, it turned out to be I'm the one who got all that many times that I uh, give to others. So this is, is a wonderful opportunity. And uh, Sophie, our district administrator. It would not happen without her. And also, not only this wonderful occasion, but I'm on the uh, surface, and I show my face all the time, but there are a whole lot more stuff happening behind the curtain. And Sophie is the person who make everything possible. So my sincere thanks. And even though I only have uh, two years, I mean three years with Sophie, but uh, just what she did and what she does, just wonderful, beyond my uh, uh, description. So thank you, Sophie. And everybody here, and all of you in the Zoom, I haven't a chance to say goodbye, uh, say hello to all of you, but I saw all of your faces, and thank you. Either we met at the church or church conference on the street or the committee or mission center, doesn't matter, but you touched my heart. So thank you so much. And this is not the ending, right? I will remain as your colleague and friend. So if, I, if you come, came across, come across in the groceries or restaurant, don't just pass me by, but I want you to stop by, hey, JW, and we could just have fun. And lastly, my blessings and my prayer goes to you, everybody, for your ministry, for your service, and for your life. And I will keep you and hold you in my prayer. 
And thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you again, JW. Uh, Jim Miller, our host pastor today, will be offering a benediction. I'd like to remind you that after the benediction, there's still some work for you to do. You're gonna receive two questions to uh, give responses that will be turned into uh, artwork for JW and Hero. So after the benediction, don't run for the doors. Uh, we'll be getting that uh, meter question up for you uh, at that time. The District Committee on Superintendency wanted to let you know that as soon as we have information about the installation of our incoming superintendent, uh, Reverend Hand, we will get that to you. We don't have that yet. She will be moving here soon, but she is jumping back and forth between two conferences, and that is a bit hectic right now. Uh, so now, Jim. Thank you, Reverend Ayers, and to all of you who have made this day possible, to uh, RDS, uh, JW, and to Mr. Hero, thank you both so much. What a blessing and honor to be able to give this uh, benediction. Uh, I wear a very proud hat, and that is I was JW's first appointment moving here to Grace, and I, he was there for me then and so many times since, and he talks about pastoring, um, a DS who's a pastor's pastor in, in many respects, and you have been that for us and for my family. I thank you. And leading the uh, Central Maryland DCOM, one of the questions we always talk about with a candidate is to the committee was, would you want this person as your pastor? Oh, to the people of St. Matthew, you are in store for such a blessing. A pastor who's coming to you has I speak from my heart, has pastored to me many times, and the blessings multiply many times, await you, and Noah and Bethesda as well, and so we give thanks for both of you and your, your love for God and how you've shared that, that love for each of us. So I invite you now to hear these words as we go forth. And there aren't many sources for saying goodbye to a DS, I discovered, but this comes from the Texas conference a little bit here that I've tailored and wanted to share with you, but it so speaks to where we're at, so let me share. Sisters and brothers, Jesus commissioned his disciples to preach the good news to the ends of the earth. This is where I added. So today we send our friend J.W. D.S. Park to announce the gospel in new ways. God feeds us with the word of life. Let us pray for our brother J.W. that God may continue to nourish him with this living word. Let us ask for God's blessings upon our brother, the Reverend J.W. Park. Lord Jesus, word made flesh, from the beginning of creation you named and claimed us for yourself. Look with kindness upon your servant J.W. who leaves this community, marked by your cross, fed by your word, filled with our care, and sent to be your presence to all he meets. Guide him on the way and bless him with your wisdom, that he may be a word of hope for a world in need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us, protect us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And now to all who are part of this gathering. Go now and embrace the new time which God has given us. Recognize Christ in friend and stranger. And as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to those in need. And may God dwell with you as your God. May Christ be your food and drink and give you pleasure in your work. And may the Spirit be your beginning and end and hold all your times in her loving embrace. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. We thank you all for being with us, and uh, we wish you a wonderful weekend. And uh, again, Hero, JW, thank you. God bless. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us.